Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hard Nine Podcast. Today is March the 10th, 2024, Oscar night. Um, NCAA Women's Tournament, well, getting going this week. Obviously, conference tournaments ending up. And then the major conference tournaments for the NCAA men going on this week. So, a lot going on. One of my favorite times of the year. Unfortunately, the Blues, not that fantastic right now. But the Pelicans in the heat of it down here in the NBA. So, things are really, really good. We are only 18 days from opening day. A lot of questions surrounding the Cardinals outfield, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah, the Cardinals outfield has been maybe the most frustrating unit that they've had over the last decade. You know, every time you think you've got it figured out, it it's gone like three years, two years ago in 2021, I guess three now, we thought O'Neal, Carlson, and Bader were the future of this team. Two of them are gone, and one of them is probably not starting. So – it's just they need to – hopefully someone takes a job and runs with it this year, or two people at least. But they when are they going to figure this outfield thing out and have you know three consecutive years of the same three guys? I mean, you aren't that far removed from it being Piscotti, Grichuk, and probably Tommy Pham at the time. Um, I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know, that, that era was there. To be fair, since 2014, I haven't done the numbers, but it sure feels like you haven't gotten any continuity since 2014. So your 10-year assessment – is probably spot on. The problem mm-hmm. is we've had the same issue with the starters, which we talked about or we'll talk about later this week. However, uh, it does feel like all all we've heard are all of these names. <clears throat> the Gritchicks when we got who we got in the trade. Drafted ahead of Mike Trout, right? Piscotti, Fam, yeah, Rose. I'm him. you know what I'm saying. Like by the same team. It. And then, you know, then like you said, it was the O'Neills, the Carlsons, the Baders. Oh, we're set. We were set so well that we traded or we allowed we DFA Adolis Garcia traded Randy Rosarina because he filmed Mike Schilt and pissed him off. Um, Tommy Pham, he we got rid of him as well. So yeah, it, it has felt Lane like Thomas. Lane Thomas gone. I mean, we could, I guess there's probably more people that I'm missing here. Richie Palacios just hit a home run today. <laughs> he did. Oh, the the beat goes His on. Highest but exit velocity ever. Now Tyler O'Neill also gonesville. Um, I, I don't know what this looks like. I, I honestly don't even know what to make of this organization at times with their talent evaluation or their player development evaluations. I just don't know. And it seems like as coming in, we thought maybe, hey, this outfield with Newt Bar, Edmund, and Walker, a strong suit. Well, two of those three are probably going to start opening day on the DL. Yeah. IL. IL. I apologize. IL. IL. Gosh, you and your bigoted terms. Um, bigoted? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. I so did not let's, believe that the designated let, or the – Disabled list was was. There's a reason oh, they don't use it anymore. I got right. it now. I did let's not know go that. to okay. Let's go to the people on the injured list. Um, there's a reason they changed it. Yes, either way. Um, news earlier this week, I, I guess two or three days ago, Tommy had been doubtful for opening day. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with him, but it's getting to a point of being very concerning for me that he had this surgery in October and it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. Like that's concerning. Like you could be in a situation where they might have to look if the surgery actually worked. Um, like at that point, it's getting to that point of where this is getting concerning. Hopefully it's just, you know, some, he said, it's just some swelling. I don't believe that, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And then Lars Newbar, two fractured um, ribs, non-displaced fractures, which I think is definitely better than displaced. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Um, not good. It's not good. New bar is a bigger loss than Tommy for me. I get Tommy's defense, but you've got Carlson and guys that can fill that hole. You don't have many guys that can fill New Bar's role defensively and offensively in the lineup. So we're starting off the year already in a bad place with this outfield. Like they can't stay healthy. It's been a tale of all this time with these guys. It it does seem to continue to get frustrating. Um, and and we talked a little bit before, but before we get to Dylan Carlson, we get to Jordan Walker, we get to those guys. One thing I thought you you brought up with me the other day. And I saw, I think he posted it, posted it on Twitter. It is very frustrating to think that if the club knew about Tommy Edmonds' injury, like that it was going to require surgery at some point, why he was not shut down in July when the season was all but over. I mean, we're, we were we were selling, so the season was over. It was over. Why it was not taken care of then like it was with Brendan Donovan and why we waited until October. I – I will continue. I do not understand what goes on within this organization and injuries. I it this has been a an issue for almost twenty years. It feels like. Yeah, I don't know what it is, and it could be that Tommy said he felt better. It could be that the Cardinals 
mishandled it. Either way, they knew his wrist was hurt. Like, I've seen people say maybe they didn't know. He went on the IL for it. They knew, okay? Like, they knew he was hurt. I don't know if they knew he needed surgery. But at that point, like, why would you even bring him back from the IL? Like, why? I What's agree. the point? Unless he's demanding it because you can't keep a guy on the IL if he doesn't want to be on it. Um, I, I don't know whose fault it is, but it was mishandled. And now we're without our center fielder for the, I don't know, foreseeable future. And there's also a chance here that Tommy Edmund just got himself Wally pipped. And uh, yeah. that could happen. So as, as you said that, I was getting ready to say, um, meanwhile, there's a, a, a massive VS2 climbing in the rankings who is pounding down the door to play center field every day. Now, not too long ago, one or two episodes, you essentially said he should not be on the major league roster. Uh, that mm -hmm. was pre Lars new bar injury. So let's be honest there. But I think even with a new bar injury, you were still thinking, give it to Dylan Carlson. Uh, but I don't know how you can go into a season with Alex, Alec Burleson and Jordan Walker in the outfield yeah. at the same time. Um, and I don't know if that means you move Brendan Donovan to left field, if that is what they're potentially going to do. And then you go Carlson, or is it Victor Scott the second time to go ahead and let's go and let him run with it? I if okay, I still I still don't know if he's ready. And I'm still like I think the best thing would be for them to not have to deal with this and have him in triple A. Uh, but you're living in a new reality than you were three days ago when we didn't know New Bar had fractures in his ribs. So you have to adjust. I'm still not like on the hype train like I was Walker to start opening day last year. I'm not driving it. Like if they were to put him down at AAA, I wouldn't be up in arms about service time manipulation. I think there'd be legit reasons for it. But the way this guy's playing right now, there's no reason not to consider him. Um, he's leading off now. For, he's leading off for them today again. Um, two for four with a walk. His hit one of his, both of his hits were off lefties, I believe, or at least one of them was. He hit. You want to hear something crazy about this guy? He hit the hardest ball he's ever hit that's been registered by Statcast. 107 today. Ground ball to the first baseman. Single. He beat it out. <laughs> like, it's crazy what this guy can do. And it the first inning was so interesting to me. He got on with a single on the first pitch. Then he there was two pickoffs by the pitcher, one by the catcher. So they tried to pick him off three times. He got the second base because Gorman walked. Then he stole third, even though Gorman got thrown out. So it's not technically a stolen base. But the third baseman didn't even cover third. Like, and he was there. <laughs> and then he scored on a wild pitch. Like, that guy is not even, like, a known quantity in baseball yet, and he already just completely disrupts the pitcher when he's on the bases. So he can do a lot of things for you. I don't know if he's ready, but at this point, is it worth taking a chance? And it might be. The answer might be yes. Um, I don't think the Cardinals have had a guy – I mean, for me, I go back to Vince Coleman. Like, that. that's that's the, the guy that I go back to who could run yeah. like that. I don't know that we've had a guy. I'm sure someone out there will – We'll come up with someone who was really fast. I know the Shields was here. Tony Womack was here. I don't know how fast he was at that point in time in his career. Um, Fernando Vina was near in his 30s when he was here. Renneria was in his 30s when he was here. So I I just don't remember a guy with his feet who can change the game. Like I mean, Bader maybe was that guy. Bader was very, very fast, but he's not Victor that. Scott fast. Yeah, so did La now, honest. let me ask you this. Last time you said, uh, last podcast, you said, there's no way if they because we got kind of sidetracked and started talking about Victor. Um, that if they bring him up when Edmund comes back, Tommy Edmund's your everyday center fielder. Now, three days later, you just said Tommy Edmund might get himself Wally Pipped. My Those reasoning... are two dramatically different yeah. statements. So, mm -hmm. what are you thinking right now? That's that's what I want to know. My reasoning for that is I think Tommy's going to be out for far longer than I thought he was going to be at that time. I don't think Tommy Edmund's going to play until at least the middle of May. I think that's being conservative at this point. Like, he's not improving at all. Like, at this point, he's going back. He's going backwards, like, every other week. So, and it sucks. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's back by May. But at this point, like, if you're the Cardinals, you got to just plan like you're not going to have him for two months because you can't just keep waiting for him. And I, I love Tommy. I think he's a great player. But he's not a guy that you have to really plan around having him back and making sure that he has a spot when he's back. Like, Which he's is not sort of why, like, when we had this discussion last time, I was saying, if, big if, two capitals, capital I, capital if, F, if Victor came up and, and did great, like everything you could expect and more, that personally, I still believe Victor's ceiling dramatically higher than Tommy Edmond. I understood what you were saying last time, 
But if he came up and did everything you needed and is a disruptor and can play everyday defense in center field, which he has not shown any problem having at any level. So I don't know why that would be a problem. And he does everything that you ask. I don't know how you could you could send him down just because Tommy Edmonds back. And I know you thought that's what they would do. And you might still think that I personally do not. I personally believe if Victor comes up and shows that he is ready to play here, that is your center fielder for hopefully the next eight to 10 years here in St. Louis, if not longer. Yeah. Well, my whole thing was now that I think it's going to be over a month that he's out. Like I really, I think that's conservative for Tommy. Um, So about the time I was like, what could Victor Scott do in two weeks that would now completely change their mindset of Tommy Edmonds, the center fielder to now it's Victor Scott. I didn't think two weeks was enough time to, especially because the pitching he's going to face, for that to even right. be like a realistic thing to expect. So that's why I said that. Um, Cause I think realistically Scott's probably going to come up if he's up and do some really good things, but also not like, he's not going to, I don't think he's going to light the world on fire. Like he might, but I don't see that as a realistic thing that's going to happen. Uh, but he's really impressive, man. Like he's got his stats up in spring to a good, like over 780 OPS, over 290 batting average, which it's spring stats, who cares? But he's doing everything he can right now to to show the Cardinals how he can impact a game. And the cool thing about him is a lot of guys like Walker come up and they have to hit. Like he has to hit. For, he has hit doubles, he has to hit homers to be the impactful player that's worth being on the major league roster. Victor Scott doesn't have to do that. He can lay down a bunt, get the first, and steal two bases and it's a triple. Like he right. can he can make a diving play in the outfield. He has a good arm. So it's it's worth a look at this point. Like it's it's monitoring. I I hope that if he comes if he struggles the next, was it three weeks of spring, they don't force him into that role. But if he earns it, then there's really no reason not to give him it if Newpar and Edmund are both on the IL, in my opinion. They're obviously using him at the leadoff spot for two reasons. One, to see how he reacts at the leadoff spot, but also to get him more at bats. That's that's why you I put a guy at three. Bats. That's why you get a guy up there in, in the leadoff yeah. spot. Do you think if, again, two capitals, he makes the team, Brennan Donovan is still your leadoff hitter? Or do you think Brennan Donovan moves yeah. down to maybe that three spot with Newbar out? Please no, no. Or the I think, two spot, um, or the two spot, and they yeah. move goalie. Down. I mean, I'm just asking. You don't, so you don't think Victor moves right into the leadoff spot? They're going to put him down with Mason Win at the eight nine spot. I I yeah. tend to agree. I just wondered. I mean, we did this last year with Walker when he was batting second every game. They just want to see him get the most at bats possible. Like today, he got four at bats and was take or five at bats and got t- was taken out right after his fifth one. Right. Like if he's batting ninth, he can't do that. So I I think that's what it is. Like you're, he's going to be the nine hitter if he's on this team, maybe eight. Um, but I would imagine ninth. Like I think you're looking at Gorman's just moving straight into that three spot, and Donovan's going to bat first. That I think so too. That makes sense to me, because I think that was an option even without Newpar's injury for Gorman to bat third. So, um, I don't know. I do think it's exciting that he's playing well. Um, but I also I want people to pump the brakes a little bit. Like they have to. Like like he he's not he's not doing what Jordan Walker did last year, where it was just he's hitting a homer. Like it seemed like every five at bats and he was just completely forcing their hand for the first half of spring training. He's not doing that, but he, it's so interesting because I feel like the way he impacts the game is not necessarily in that way. It's like you watch it and it's noticeable. And honestly, I need to pull this up. Ollie had some quotes today that I thought were interesting um, that I thought were telling, I guess, about the fact that they are definitely looking at it as a possibility at this point. So this is John Denton. He said, we're going to continue to throw him out there and see what it looks like. Um, and then he said, he's not, they're not chasing offense. They don't want to chase offense. They want to prioritize defense. So that basically says, I don't want to put Alec Burleson and Jordan Walker in the outfield right. for offensive production is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So it's interesting, but also like if, if Scott's not on the team, like can Donovan play outfield, they haven't put him anywhere but second yet. And is that something they they did say they're going to start doing that next week and putting him in the outfield. So that would be my – I would never have an outfield of Burleson and Walker. Like, Donovan would be in left if if Scott's not on this team. Or Car- – or yeah, if Scott's not on this team, right. If he is, let me ask you, is it, do you think Carlson's in left? That's what i do. Okay. That's what I would do because I think then at least you have a strong off, uh, defense in the outfield. And I think with this – especially with Sonny Gray out, like with this rotation and the fact that we know they're going to give up some hard-hit balls, they're going to give up doubles – like you need to have an outfield that can at least track some balls down and make up for your shortcomings in right field. Because I love Jordan Walker, but he's not looking a ton better as of right now. He made another error today. Like you have to have at least two of your three outfielders that can go get the ball. Let me ask you this. I think this is one of those things where I 
I always struggle with as a fan, but I think a lot of people, I don't think they're being hypocritical, but I think it's the, the chicken or the, and eh, that's not the right analogy. Either way, let me ask you this about spring training. How do you, it's so interesting to me that we get so excited about Jordan Walker's offense last year. And we get excited about Mason or Mason or Victor Scott, Mason, win whatever in spring training. But then we also turn around and say, don't be worried about Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson. And uh, I wouldn't say that, but yeah. Fill in the blank because it's only spring. Do you know, like, I don't know where that yeah. line is. I almost think it's like you can't get too excited or too upset about anything. The only mm-hmm. thing I can say is I, I think I trust veterans. So if veterans are struggling. Maybe I, 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 that I don't read as much into that, but if a young kid who is hungry, like we saw Jordan Walker, like we've seen Mason win, like we're seeing Victor Scott, like we've seen Nolan Gorman in the past in spring training is doing great in spring training. I think there's something to be said about that versus maybe getting upset about veterans who are probably working on something or just honestly going through to get their arm ready for opening day or the first week of the season. I think a big part of it. And it's also like, it's as simple as you probably shouldn't read as much into any of this as we do. Like it probably is that simple, but I do think there is a part of it where guys like Lynn, Arenado, Goldie, like Goldie struck out like 50% of his at bats. And I just don't care. Um, Those guys are doing, they know they have a job. They're working through things. Guys like Scott Walker last year. So JC was four for four today. He's having a great spring so far. Those guys are trying to earn an opportunity. They're not taking this light. They, I don't think they treat it like spring training. Like they treat it like I'm trying to win a job. So I yeah. do think there's even a difference in that. But it's also more important than that. You have to give these young guys an opportunity to make the team because when else are you going to do it? Right. So that it's a, there's a lot of layers to it. And there truly is like if, if Scott just completely outplays Dylan Carlson, that doesn't to me mean he's automatically going to be better in the regular season. But it might mean that both of these guys were fighting for an opportunity. And at some point, you got to give it to the guy that earns it. Yep. I agree. So that's how and I, I think. It. I think that's what I was kind of saying last week about where I know Dylan Carlson, we've seen him do it, be in the big leagues, but that doesn't mean that he's better than Victor Scott. That's all I was trying to say. Like, I'd have I them both in my outfield. Well. Do if what? Scott makes the team, I'd have them both in my outfield to day one. Okay. I think that's fair. Um, like, I think that's just – it's also like – the cool thing about this, and it sucks. Injuries suck. Like, I want to watch Lars Newbar play against Otani and Yamamoto. That would have been cool. But um, you're giving guys opportunities that wouldn't have gotten opportunities otherwise. And sometimes that's when guys just take it and run with it, and you don't see it coming. Brendan Donovan in 2021, no, I mean, 2022, no one saw that coming. Like, Albert Pujols, obviously, 2001, different. Obviously, he became a legend, but just in general, guys will take opportunities to run with it when they come out of nowhere. So it could end up being a good thing that these guys get this opportunity. But it's interesting. Like, this outfield's shaking out in a weird spot right now. I don't know how I feel about it. Because if you have Victor Scott on this roster and you have what I said with Carlson in the outfield, your lineup's getting pretty weak at the bottom third. Agreed. Do you do you see a world where they're concerned about Tommy Edmond and they bring in a Tommy Pham or a Adam Duvall? No, I don't. I don't I, see. I don't, I don't. And it's mainly because, yeah, I just don't. I don't think that would make any sense because you have other guys that I would rather give opportunities to. Would you rather have Dylan Carlson in left field or Adam Duvall? I'd rather have the platoon of Carlson and Burleson over Adam Duvall. Really? I would not. Adam Duvall doesn't play. He doesn't stay healthy anymore. I mean, you, that and same he, argument, I mean, can be made about Dylan Carlson. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I just want it pay. I, that's a waste of money to me because I think you're okay. going to get similar production. Really? Maybe in, I think if you play like in this situation, you'd be getting poor defense from Burleson. But if they're if they do want to play Burleson in the left field, which I would understand, I want to do it, but I'd get it. Then if you're platooning Burleson and Carlson, I'd really like that. Like those are okay. two guys that crushed the other side of the um the other pitchers. So I would enjoy that if that happened. Um, but I just don't think like it makes much sense to bring in another veteran on this team that's that's clogging up spots. I don't. Because even like I think they're probably hoping Lars Newpar is not going to be out very long. They're still saying hopeful for opening day. I don't see any way that happens. But that might mean that he's it's two or three weeks into the season, and then you're just gonna DFA Duval. Like I that that I mean he had an eight thirty four OPS last year. How many games did he play? 92. Don't care. Okay. I'm no offense to him. He's a really good player, but I just 92 games is not not enough for me. Okay. That's fair. I mean, I was just asking. Like, I think <clears throat> I think Adam Duvall is an upgrade over Dylan Carlson and Alec Burleson. I was a good player, but I don't think it I don't think it's worth I mean, how are you gonna get him to come here? You're gonna tell he's gonna the first question he's gonna ask is what happens when Nuke Barr and Edmund are back? 
And what no, are you going to do? Your your logic is one hundred percent correct. I'm just saying, like he's going to go somewhere it. where he can play every single day. Yeah, he hasn't yet. In that, while he and Tommy Pham, either one haven't signed. I think people like they have these systems now where it's like they assign dollar values to internal players and to external players. And if they don't see a five million dollar difference between Adam Duvall and the guy you're paying league minimum, they're not paying him five million dollars. Yeah, I think that's probably unfortunately true. that's what that's why you get Joey Votto on an NRI. Like that's that sucks. Joey Votto should be on a major league deal in, in this game. Yeah. And he's non roster invite to the Blue Jays. It sucks. By the way, pumped for him to be in Toronto. Where I'd be more pumped if it was on a major league deal. Like that's you think he, he makes that be... team? Yeah, I, I do too. I think him I and Justin too. Turner would be a great platoon. I do too. I do too. Wow. Not to mention just the leadership in the in the dugout with those two guys. What'd you do there? There's a crock pot by me and I hit. Ah, you we are both literally in the worst spots of all time. My poor office has been taken over by my other by your twin sister, who has like turned it into a, what looks like a mess hall. Like there is just crap everywhere in there. So she is moving back out in May. However, I really miss my I, I'm stuck in our walk in closet right now with this podcast. And it's an interesting maneuver in here, let to say the least. And you yeah. look like you could be being held hostage right now. It, there was no way to make this lighting look right. So I just turned it off. OK, um, this, I have a question for you. And this yeah. this is get, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. So I'm going to say that out front because I'm still not convinced Victor Scott's making this team. But let's say in a world he does, and he earns it enough to where they can't validate sending him down because his defense is what you think it is. He's making an impact on uh, on the base pass, and he's doing everything you ask him to do. So you're just going to keep him and let him write it out. What does that mean for Tommy Edmund? I mean, I think he becomes a platoon guy. Which is probably what he should, but he's an expensive platoon guy. For one year, yeah, he is. And you you gave him that contract, and and you and you didn't either. Which you he earned, by the way. He earned. Well, that agreed, contract. but either you didn't, as an organization, do your due diligence on the injury ten months ago, or he or was didn't. not up front. One or the other, right? So mm -hmm. either way, there's there's culpability potentially on both sides, but for sure on one. We just definitely don't know which side sides. that is. Because huh? I think if Tommy would have, I, I definitely on both sides, right? Because I think if Tommy would have gone to them and said, "I can't play through this, like it's not worth it," they they would not have said, "Boy, you're playing." Like that and happen. this is what I was trying to port. I don't think I said it as well as I wanted to last week. So I'm going to try and say it maybe a little bit more eloquently this week. I just think if Tommy Edmond is a platoon guy, that means Victor Scott is doing at least what you expected him do, to do, if not more. more and I think sure. that ceiling is, again, way higher than Tommy Edmond. I, I just I just yeah. do. I mean, just his, just his presence on the base pass is – that can impact the game in so many different ways. But it's interesting. Like, then do you just maybe like – Maybe then you platoon Newbar and Edmund. Maybe you platoon Scott and Edmund. Maybe that's what you do. Maybe if, you platoon Gorman and Edmund. Like there's a lot of options there, depending on who's not hitting against lefties. Can I say that if Lars Newbar becomes a platoon guy, then he was the most maybe the most overhyped player in Cardinal history. You like Nolan Gorman a lot. He was a platoon player last year. Um, he's also 23, and all I've been hearing for, about Newbar for three years is that he is an elite. Oh, okay. Outfielder he's in Major League Baseball. Newbar is really he's not elite. He's really good. Um, I'm just I'm not even saying like it would be him. It probably won't. It'd be other guys, but there's a lot of options there, is what I'm trying to say. A lot of lefties in their lineup that you could do that with. Or like then you get to the trade deadline, and that's where you make a trade. And maybe that's where the road ends for Tommy Edmond in St. Louis if that's what happens. But we, once again, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. We are. Now let me ask you something though. I personally would. So would you get nervous if all of those players are at Ali's disposal? Because we have seen in the past where his juggling of lineups and players in not just certain games, but certain situations, i.e. pinch hitting for guys instead of not pinch hitting for guys, pinch hitting for the wrong guys. Like, I worry about that. I would – would you worry about that? I would. I'd say no because I think in 2022, the way he handled Albert Pujols and Corey Dickerson was perfect for okay. me. I thought what he did with those lineups was great. Like, the way he maximized his lineup on a daily basis in 2022 – like that's the reason they that's one of the major reasons they won 93 games in my opinion. Cuz they didn't really have a ton of everyday guys. They had guys that could only hit one side and he and he managed that really well. And the way he used Albert specifically I was really impressed with as a rookie manager like sitting him when he needed to, pinch hitting for him when he needed to. So I'm not concerned about that. I think he'll do the right okay. things. Um it could be tricky though. Like it could be as simple as there's two situations that are kind of like similar stats wise and you got to just kind of go with your gut and that's where it gets tricky, but 
Um, no, I'm not. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Let, I, let I me think ask two you of your this. best spots are taken by guys who aren't going to play much. So there's not even that much to figure out anyway. Let me ask you this, because I really do want to get your opinion on this. And I'm really intrigued by this. If let's say Jordan Walker's defense doesn't just not improve, but it continues to or it gets worse. There it's is a world. Worse. OK, so it stays where it is, which is the bottom of the of baseball. All right. Right. How do you how do you not make him a DH and put Brendan Donovan in the outfield at some point? You do. OK, I so just, you could see I, a world where it's new bar center field fill in the blank there and Donovan in the outfield. I don't think it's going to happen because I think it's going to get better. But I do. Okay. I do think that's what you'd have to do. Like you can't just keep he can't kill, kill, keep killing your pitchers like he has. I and agree. I think he's gonna. I'm gonna give him time. Like he's so athletic. It's so weird to me because I get the outfield's difficult, but like he's so athletic. I don't understand why he has so many problems out there. Like he, for as athletic as he is, he doesn't look athletic in the outfield at all, and it's weird. Like yeah. even when he's like makes a nice running play, it looks clunky and like it looks strange. He looks like a guy who never took outfield like fly balls in his life. Sometimes he probably didn't. Well, I, I mean, who I, I went to the park when I was an infielder with my friends and took fly balls. Like, I, he I might not have. he did stuff like that. Yes, he did. <laughs> he I might have stayed on did. the dirt. Maybe. He's probably a short, he was a shortstop in high school, I think. Right. He might so have stayed yeah. on the dirt. I, I just think that's an interesting concept. Can I tell you something? I'm really fucking worried about this team. I don't I know. Am, I don't know what to think. Yet. I, I was way more optimistic in, even after we signed Lynn, Gibson, and Gray. Like, I was optimistic coming in. Yeah, now we have three massive injuries. I agree. But we knew those could happen anyway. I am, I am, I am highly concerned. I think you could see a four and 12 opening to this season. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I I I can't say it's not. I hope not, too. I mean, they went 10 and 25 last year. Like, it's possible. I don't know. I'm going to let it play out. Like, you never know. Like, guys can go on Jeremy Hazel Baker, Baker streaks and help you win games. Like, it happens. We've seen it. Like, that's what we thought Newt Bar was doing, and they just continue doing it. Um, How many it's, podcasts it, talk about Jeremy Hazel Baker, by the way? Shout out. Probably every Carlos podcast has at least mentioned him once. I like, don't think not. so. I Either doubt. way, like, guys go on street. Like, Alec Burleson could get really hot for three weeks. It wouldn't shock me. and help you win games. So, I'm not going to say that yet. We'll see what happens. But it's definitely concerning. The most concerning part is I think they built a team – that isn't as prepared to handle injuries as other teams in baseball. Again. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you can't develop pitching. Like, honestly, Correct. I'm not worried about the offense. I think it'll be fine. I'm worried about. I was going to ask you that. It's been very bad in the spring. Very, very it was bad. good today. Literally. Right. I understand. I'm talking as a whole. I'm not talking about in mm-hmm. a vacuum. I'm talking about as a whole. It's been bad. Now, again, it's spring training. I don't like reading into too much into that, but it does. It. I do think you'd like to have a little momentum as we get closer to opening day right with now. the bats. The last week they've been pretty good. Um, or last, I guess, three or four days. I don't know how long it's been, but they've been pretty good recently. Here's what I'll say. A big part of why I think it's been as inconsistent as it has is if you watch the games, they're splitting up their starters, right? Like they, they have Goldie, Arenado, Contreras on one side, and then the, the, the next game it'll be Gorman, Carlson, um, Herrera, like random guy, Donovan, like they're splitting them up. So you're not having your full lineup ever. They haven't had it once. Right. So it's not concerning to me. Like you'll have games where it's like five young guys starting at the bottom of the lineup because guys went days off and stuff. So I'm not worried about it. When we get, you want to see it get better. Like I'll say when we get to Arizona, cause they're in Arizona for one or two games to play the Cubs uh, before they go out to LA um, to, for opening day. At that point, you'd want to see like this, that they're doing right now, continue and see some good strides. But like when you got guys like Goldie Arnado struggling, well, Arnado start had it heated up a little bit today. Then yeah, your offense isn't going to be as good. But I'm not worried about those guys. Um, what does Kaperniak have to do? Go to another organization. You think so? Yeah. I uh, uh he's British, by the way. He played for Green he is. last year. Um I don't think he's British. I think he's from America, but he was one of those players that somehow Trace Thompson was on the Great Britain team. I don't know. Um I, I don't know. Like he's just not really on my radar, unfortunately. There's too many guys ahead of him. It's just a reality of it, I think. He's having a pretty good spring. Or he was. He's, I don't know where he's at now. He does some good fair. things. Like like he he has some massive flaws in his game, but he does some things. Like he could be a starter for eight, the Oakland or like platoon guy for them. He definitely could. I mean, he had an eight but he had an eight thirty nine OPS at Springfield last year. Yeah, Only like, 33 wasn't, he like 20, wasn't he 25 or 26? I think he's 25, yeah. 
Yeah, um, like, that's tough. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It just feels like he's done everything they ask. It's just one of those. Yeah. That it's well, again he'll be that bad at some point. I think, or he'll go somewhere and be a star. Then he <laughs> is, dude. Like then he is. It happens. <laughs> Add it to the list. Add it like, to no the one list. talks about the fact that the Guardians traded Nolan Jones and Yandy Diaz for nothing. I agree. Are those players are better than the ones we traded. Well, other than Adolis. Let's they, they're not better. I was wrong. Let's, that that was a true. bad statement right there, by the way. That's that was a true. really bad statement. Yeah. You might want to crop really that good, out. Though. Yandy's really good. Nolan Jones also very good. Tyler O'Neill gone is seems weird, right? Like open that's an opening day home run guaranteed. If you're a fan to a better, you bet on true. Tyler that's O'Neill that an opening. And now he's hurt. Do, 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 will do they expect him to be back by or ready he's by opening injury day? Again. Who who's surprised he's having more soft tissue muscle injuries? Like until he changes the way he works out, I don't think he's ever going to be healthy, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that's unfortunately a problem. Like, I, I will wonder this, and I don't want to – I like Tyler a lot. I like him as a person. I met him a few times when I worked there. Nice guy. I'm a fan. I hope he does well. But do you think the guy ever looks around and says, why does nobody else here look like me? <laughs> There's a reason, Tyler. There's no. a reason John Carlos Stanton just lost 30 pounds of muscle. Yeah. Because he can't stay healthy. Like, I want the guy to be on the field playing – but you cannot be a bodybuilder in Major League Baseball. It doesn't work. Are you telling me I should not keep Stanton in fantasy? No, he lost a bunch of weight. He looks good now. He does look good. But but no, he's probably going to bat 150. Yes. I don't that's like who he is that. Now. That's who he is now. He's going to hit 30 bombs, though. Okay, that's all I need. That's all I care about. He'll drive in 80, hit 30, probably. That's what you'll get from him. He's been sixth yeah. in their lineup now, though. That's crazy. I know. I know. Yankees Line look result. good. I mean, I think on paper. They're a good team. The Yankees. They have a really good, good offense. Team. I'm impressed with yeah. what they've done. I'm I'm ready for the season to start. Obviously, the 20th is the Dodgers. I think in the Padres, right? I think in Korea, uh, that's mm-hmm. the that's the kickoff. Um, I'm interested so to see. That's only by 10 the days way. away. Yes, I'm very excited for that. Uh, I won't be watching it because it's at like three in the morning. But I will watch. You'll it be on up. Repeat. You'll be. I'll up. watch the first. I'll watch the first like four innings. Um, I wonder if I wonder how the Dodgers are going to line up their rotation. This is not about the outfield, but I'm still intrigued. Like, so let's say. Yamamoto is going to start a soul game. He has to, right? Like, so he's going to be out there, I guess. He hold and on, he's, stop. He's starting game one against Darvish. It's already on yeah. the books. Okay, has, they already they Just already know it? that. Uh, it's already been announced. Yes. Okay. Cool. So you go him. I would think Glass now game two. If I had to guess, I, I, I think, would they're, think one, so. they're working Walker up slowly. I don't think he's going to start that early. So if those are your two, do you think they come back? Because they could realistically be on normal rest to start game one and That's two again exactly against the Cardinals what, for. But 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 does that mess up your? Do you want Yamamoto to already have, let's say, ten to twelve innings under his belt before anyone else is thrown when he's he's used to a six man rotation? To me, it's not even a question. Opening day, Chavez Ravine. I get the hype around it, but Yamamoto's going to be the opening day starter for the Dodgers. Does no that doubt about you, it. Though, if you're the Dodgers at all, that you're no. getting him twelve. It's one extra game, dude. It's one extra anyone's start. Pitched? That you now aren't going to have to have later in the year. He's still going to. That's true. That is true. Well, I don't know how that works. No, because if he's starting, no, he'd have to. No, he'd start another one. He'd be on. They're not. But what I'm saying is, games. It's not like they're playing 164 games. They're still playing 162 games. Yeah, so, but the pro. Yeah, yeah but the, your logic's not making sense because he's starting the first and the third game. So then, yes, he's making more starts. I get it, but what I'm saying is, my guess is that first start. He's probably on some sort of count. Five inning, five innings, something yeah, like probably. that, maybe. I bet he's but I, I, I wouldn't be I, surprised if their starters only pitch four. That wouldn't shock me. I do not see a world where opening day in LA, Cardinals, Dodgers, your new guy, like the guy, Otani's mm-hmm. going to be hitting second, and Yamamoto's going to be on the bump for the game one. That that I don't even think there's if something else were to happen, I'd be if it's Bobby Miller, I don't even know what Could the be Dodgers Walker would Bueller. be doing. It's but going to turn. Okay. It's going to be champion. Yamamoto. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I'm just saying it's interesting because that is a guy that, once again, six-day rotation guy that also, like, I don't know if he's going to be on innings limit, but I think they're going to keep their eye on his innings just because it's new, a new baseball. Your arm's going to react differently. I don't think they're going to want him to throw 220 innings this year. So the, it is something to monitor, I think. They could the change Cardinals it if they wanted to. The Cardinals are going to walk into a buzzsaw that is going to have every star in L.A., at the game for that, mm-hmm. that week, LeBron's going to be there and all his buddies. Um, every, I mean, the, who's the other big Dodger guy out there? Pat Sajak. He's going to be there. They're all going to be there. Right. I every was athlete. A India, was a guardians and a Yankees fan. I think he's a Dodger fan now, but either he's way, a, he's, 
He's a he's gonna be there. I think they're all going to be there. Magic's yeah. going to be there. Well, he and you're going in to face Yamamoto, Glass now, Miller, Bueller, potent most likely. Here's my take. Don't good care, luck, boys. Him. I don't care. Beat him. <laughs> I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't feel bad for you. Beat him. <laughs> like it's a baseball game. Score more runs than they do for nine innings. All of your stuff is logical there. I'm just letting you know. They'll win That's two games. Not, huh? They'll win two games. My okay. prediction. I'm putting it here today. Two, two okay. and two. Of the open the open the season. Lance Lynn, shut, Lance Lynn revenge game. That's what we're getting. We're getting Lance Lynn revenge game opening day. Okay. He has a bad taste in his mouth after last, his last start in LA, where he was, you know, looking over his shoulder every time he threw a ball because they were going over. He the got place. kicked out by Angel Hernandez, bro, in spring training. We- that's awesome. I love that. That's so Lance Lynn. He did, like that's great. He was pitching bad, so he's like, I'm making an impression my first time back. He got kicked out. <laughs> and Ollie went with him. I loved it. And then he went to the bullpen and they kicked him out of there. And then he said Angels in midseason form was awesome. Yes. I just love that. Yes. I love Lance Lynn. Not Lance Lynn back, quotes. I'm glad bad. they're back. Lance Lynn yeah, post game conferences are fantastic. All right. Yeah, they are. They always have been. Let's get back to the outfield because I feel like we strayed a little bit. In your mind, do you think so? We're going into this offseason. And it was Nupar Edmund Walker. That was the clear picture of the mm-hmm. outfield. Do you think we see that? Do you think we see that become the outfield again? That's after a all great these injuries? question. Like, I think we'll see it for times where it's like, obviously one or two games we'll see it. But I mean, like, do you think we'll have a week during the season where that's no doubt the starting outfield for the for a period of time? No. It's interesting, right? Yeah, that's a really will. good question. And the only reason I say no is it just seems like every time we think we have the outfield lined up, it's never, ever what we think it's going to be. We had that second half of 2021 was special, wasn't it? That was That's the only time. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. I want to see think, Dylan Carlson let me ask you earn an opportunity, man. What are your expectations for Dylan Carlson in 2024 as a St. Louis I don't Cardinal? Think, I'm like, I have any. Sadly, like, like, I don't know what to think. I think he can be really good still. I do. But I almost think he's not ever go. He's not going to be good until he leaves. That's kind of where I'm at with him. How does that keep happening here? Do you realize how many people we have said that with in the last five mm-hmm. years? Oh, he's not going to be good until he gets out of St. Louis. Like that's a problem. Dude. Well, I've never said that about so, I, even Tyler, I guess. But that was kind of. I don't mean thing. us, just you and I. I mean, I have heard that so many times with so many guys. Mm-hmm. All the young, right? We heard it there. We heard it with Colton Wong. We heard it with Tyler O'Neill. We heard it with Bader. We've heard it with Carlson. We didn't hear it with Bader, I don't think. Well, there were people. Also, like, to be fair, like, all those guys, how many of those came to fruition? Wong wasn't better when he left. I agree. Uh, DeYoung got DFA twice when he left. Yeah. I'm just saying, it's weird that we put so much stock in these guys, but yet we don't think they can be good until they Mm -hmm. get out of here. Here's one thing I'll say. I, I agree with your point. I think too often I hear this guy on the Cardinals needs a change of scenery. When do the Cardinals become the guy, the team that brings guys in and helps them with a change of scenery? That's sort of what I meant. Yes. So I do agree with that. Like, I think there is a fair point. And if, if this is a big, if I don't know if it's going to happen, if O'Neill goes on and is great with the Red Sox and is healthy. And if Carlson ends up leaving when, when, whether that's in a year or six months or whatever, and he ends up being really good for another team. At that point, the numbers are stacking up too much to where I can't defend it. Like at some point you have to look in the mirror and say, what's going on here. Yeah, I think it's hard to defend now, to be honest with you, but those would be two I don't because I examples. like the guys they have. You know what I mean? Like, I like Newt Barr and Walker. I like Tommy. I like Scott a lot. So I still, if, if they had like a barren outfield where it was like, what are we going to do? Then I would agree. But I think they have a lot of really talented guys that can make it so we don't think about Adolis and Randy anymore because those guys are good. But they have to be We're, good. We are not to the level of Austin Dean in the outfield. And who's the Justin other guy? Williams. Oh, there it is, Justin Williams. We are not there, so that is good. He had a homer off Bauer, though. In what, Korea? Laser. No. No, that was in, in the game they beat Bauer oh, in L.A. That's right. That's right. That's right. I called off work that day. Sorry, Starbucks. <laughs> it was Flaherty versus Bauer, and Flaherty got hurt. It was not worth it. I remember um, that. I do remember that. Okay. Yeah, so I think – I guess What do we think of this outfield? Be, I don't know. Good? Bad? We don't know? Mediocre? We, uh, it's a it's a question mark TBD for me. All right. Yeah, me too. It could be so good, man. Like, it really could. Like, you could have the best corner outfield combination with Newt Barn Walker you've had in a long time if they're healthy. When, let me ask you another question. And I think this is a touchy subject for Cardinals fans. 
probably you as well, because I know you're such a big fan. And I am too. Please understand this because I'm not questioning anything about the guy outside of staying healthy. When do we start to get really concerned with Lars Nupar? It's a, it's a fair question. It's so weird, though, because it kind of reminds me of Aaron Judge's, not player-wise, but when he was getting injured a lot and people called him injury-prone, and then he had like three straight years of playing almost every game. But those injuries were all very strange injuries where it was like, you can't say that this is like a predictive thing. Like, you can't predict Lars Nupar is going to, you know, hit a wall just weirdly enough to break two ribs because he elbowed himself in the ribs. You know what I mean? You can't predict he's going to hit a ball off his balls and be out for two weeks. Or he's going to slide in the third and dislocate a finger. You know what I mean? Like, these are all injuries. Like, in the other, even the back injury, he, like, fell against the wall weird. So they are weird. But they're at this point, they're piling up to the point to where you need to at least have – somebody needs to have a talk with him, Arnado Goldie, and talk to him about how you play the game to keep yourself healthy. That doesn't mean not playing 100%, but it does mean in spring training not hitting a fucking wall. Well, the last time we did this, we did this with Tyler O'Neill, and then he jogged and – I'm not saying don't run hard. I'm saying don't slide head first. I'm <laughs> I was saying, kidding. I was kidding. I'm saying don't run into walls unless you're unless it's like a do or die play. Don't do it. Ken Griffey Jr.'s career was shortened because of this. He was running into Correct. walls too much. So there is a way to go about it. Like there is some luck involved in being available a lot, but there's also there's a reason Manny Machado and Arenado are out there every day. They do things to make that happen. So someone I needs mean, to get to this guy and help him do that. The best ability is availability. So and I do I think, think it's at an some ability. point I do. I think I do too, by the way. But until he puts together a full season, mm-hmm. I don't know how you can continue to say, like, oh, this guy is elite and deserves to be on these lists. I he's not, uh, the, the I potential is there. He's elite. Okay. Like, he's great. a top five. Whatever. I think he's a top five left fielder in baseball. I do. But how, really? Well, look at the out. Look at the left fielders in baseball. Dan, they're <clears> horrible. Okay. Well, like Juan okay, Soto's not even in left field anymore. Kyle Tucker's not in left field anymore. They have it's like Jordan Alvarez, and that's it. Um, but yeah, I I think he's a really good player, but I, he does need to stay healthy. And as of right now, my answer would be I'm not worried about him because I do think these injuries are very weird. It's not like he's pulling hamstrings every day. Like I, that's all of his injuries are what O'Neill was going through, where they were legitimately like chronic injuries that are going to follow him. Um, they're not that, so I'm not worried about him for the future, but he does need to figure it out. Yeah, I understand all that, but they still continue to happen. Whether they're weird or yeah, not, I get it. they still so continue like to bad happen. luck, though. Like, we've seen this before where, like, Aaron, like I said, Aaron Judge, who was going through a lot of these things, and right. then for three years he didn't, and he played, like, 155 games all three years. So we'll when see. Did, when do we, is Lars going to be back for opening day, do you think, or do you think this is going to no linger? Way, right? There's no way. Well, they said two weeks? Two, fractured, two weeks of not swinging. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, then no. Um, Like, so, so you have... He has two fractured ribs, dude. He's not going to be ready in three weeks. Yeah, I, I, agree. I, I, I That's as simple as I can make this. He has two ribs that are fractured. He's not playing in three weeks. Like, I would love it. I would, but I just, it would also be dumb. Like, let the guy heal. Don't have him going out against literally the best pitching staff in baseball wh- where he can barely swing because he's hurt. Like, I, it makes no bruised, sense. I bruised a rib in a high school basketball game my junior year. Junior year. I had to miss the next game. I couldn't breathe, dude. If if I literally sneezed once and I almost blacked out, mm-hmm. bruised, not broken. Maybe bruised is worse. I don't believe that. That's bruised is ever worse than broken. So I'm just saying that's. I know it was the worst pain. You couldn't move any way at all mm-hmm. without it hurting. Like yeah, and it's just all. similar to like Sunny for me and and Tommy for me. When they're back, they need to be back and good. Like yes. you know. Like you can't be so concerned that maybe Burleson's diva is not good enough, or maybe Scott's not ready, or maybe you know Carlson can't hit from the left side that you rush him back and he's, you know, and he's playing as bad like worse than those guys because he's hurt. All right, so fill in this final point. blank for the outfield. All right, opening day March twenty eighth roster. There's going to be five outfielders we believe. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's going to be no, Walker. Four. Okay, Walker, Carlson. Burleson, who's the fourth one? Yeah, there has to be four, right? Since Carpenter and Crawford are on the team without an injury. Now um, you have Brendan Donovan, so if that if that's the guy, that's your fourth. I'll get him as my fifth then. I'll get him as him as my fifth. So so there's only one guy then. What no, my point was there's four like actual outfielders on the roster because you can't have five. But if you're counting Burleson as outfielder and, and I mean Donovan as an outfielder. Okay, and I don't think you're understanding my question. Who's the fourth outfielder? Correct. 
Okay, well, I think if it's Victor Scott, he's not the fourth outfielder. Okay, you're still not understanding my so question. So what are you asking? So I apologize. Me? I think maybe that's on me. What my point was, my point was this. Your four outfielders are either, all right, that are going to be playing the outfield. That's what I mean. I don't care how you list them on a roster. Okay. That are going to be playing the outfield are either A, Burleson, Walker, Carlson, Donovan, or B, Burleson, Walker, Carlson, Scott. Which one are you going with? Okay, I don't even think you said that the first time. <laughs> I, I but, tried. Okay. Um, All I wanted you to do is to fill in the blank on who the outfielders were, and then I'm you going... started telling me how Burleson was going to be listed as a first baseman. I don't no, give two Donovan. fucks about that. No, I meant Donovan, but I say I misspoke. Um, I'll go B. I think they're going to have Scott on the roster. Okay. All right. So that means that's not you, me saying you, that's what I do, but that's what I think they're against going to Yamamoto. Do. Are we looking at Carlson, Scott, Walker, or are we looking at Donovan, Scott, Burleson? With Walker DH. Here's what's interesting to me. I don't know. That's my answer to that question. Here's what's interesting to me. Um, if you have Victor Scott in the outfield and you believe he is as good of a fielder as you think, like not you, but the Cardinals, um, and he is as he's incredibly fast, he can cover more ground. Does that make you more willing to have a Burleson in left field? And that's a question they're gonna have to answer. Yeah, I agree. So I don't know. Um like for me, I would here. never have Burleson in left field. I'd have Donovan out there and Burleson DHing if it came to it. Before we get out of here, thank you, everybody, for listening, whether you're on Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever, or YouTube. We greatly appreciate you. Subscribers going way up. Please continue to do that. I think what would make subscribers go up even more is if you would give us the UI7 Caleb Noble smile that leads into the package on for Champagne and University of Illinois on TV. Can you give that? Mm, it's forced. I hate it. It's That's the best. It. Literally, it's going to become our new profile picture on Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to crop well, it's it. Either that or I'm like this. It's either that or I'm like, ah, that looks What weird. is worse as now being on TV for a few weeks? What is worse, seat, seated or standing? Standing, for sure. Yeah, your hands. The only you thing were, about... You went back to your hands, felt a little... They, they Did they feel like they you had two oven mitts on there or something? But here's the problem. Here, here was the problem, okay? So when we went through rehearsal, the, the camera was only my, like, my my chest up uh -huh. so that's what i was expecting and naturally i was expecting it to be the same as rehearsal that's why we do rehearsal i get in there and it turns out like, okay three two one go and I, I can see myself and it's my whole body and i'm like well this is not what i prepared for and now i don't know what to do i wasn't standing <laughs> right i was not prepared at all for that for everyone then, who does they, they not give know. us these chairs that roll around and like spin and now i'm doing like stupid things spinning and i because i'm nervous it's bad for years, Caleb could not take a picture because he didn't know or without not knowing what to do with his hands. So they were either balled up, they were like they were like this, very stringent down, or they were in his pockets or behind they his like back. This. <laughs> and then this one, they were like this. They were like almost upside down jazzy hands. They no, were fantastic. I was, I was kind of holding them together. It's it's it great. It's very, it's very you're very aware that you're on camera. That's yeah. what I'll say. I am. And I tell you this, you've got to get more agree. shirts. You can't just wear the same black one every week. Then buy me a shirt or else shut up. First of all, son, you have money. I know. You have money in your account. Go buy Not yourself. Much. I just bought Charlie's today. <laughs> Go buy yourself three shirts that are different. Orange. You need an orange. Get a blue Ugh, and a white. I'm not wearing orange. I'm not wearing orange. Illinois colors. You're Poor on an Illinois. Illinois sports broadcast. I do not need to pop that much. I want to be, I want to go under the radar. I'm Johnny Cash. I'm in all black. Can we do at least you don't have the David Burns suit jacket on. I'm gonna, so that I'm was gonna start dressing like Ken Rosenthal with a bow tie. See if that gets me places. Let's not. Let's not do it. Worked for him. It's worked for him. It has. Him like Craig and Craig Sager. Yeah. That well, yeah. Hey, R.I.P. One of my one of my all time favorites. Yeah, Craig Sager. He's the best. You're doing great. It's fantastic. <laughs> Everyone go check that out also. Don't. UI seven, do it. News. <laughs> it's it's worth also the by the way, the your shots and your your video packages are fantastic. I know. Oh, when by also your guy Drake Westcott, your boy is on fire. He is big ten player good. of the week. Really Shout good. out to Edwardsville High School last week. All right, anything else before we get out? Oh, Old I news. know what I want to say. Um, next time we're doing the relief pitchers and the minor league pitchers with Kareem. Really excited. If you don't follow Kareem on Twitter, do so. Very, very in depth minor league stuff he <laughs> gives us. I love having him on the show. He's going to be with us next time, and we're going to go through. We're going to talk about the bullpen, which because there are a lot of guys in there, I know their names. I am they're not so familiar far. with their repertoire.
and very good so far this spring. So yeah, I'm get, excited for that. Do we get excited about that, or should we just say, "Oh, it's spring; it doesn't matter"? I here, here's the thing: as a fan, you can do it either way, right? You can say, I, "I'm going to be excited about the good stuff and not care about the bad stuff," right? Um, which is which is what I do, honestly. But here's the I thing: I think you have to. But here's the thing: I was excited about the bullpen coming into this um, into the spring, and it's nice to at least see that what I believe they could have stuff wise is at least carrying over into spring training. So that's the way I'm taking it. We'll see what happens in the regular season, but I like that their stuff is showing in a good way because stuff is going to translate. I'll bring this up with Kareen, but for me, I love that there's a ton of competition for spots. It's felt like in the past you went into spring training and the bullpen was almost already set. And then if somebody knock on wood Mm -hmm. got hurt, the only guy you had was Jake Woodford or Zach Thompson. That was it. That was it. That's all you had waiting. Now it feels like, You've got the bullpen set with your eight guys, but there are another. That's why I really I don't think it's set yet. Well, you, what I'm saying is, you've got in right now when they May, have it. Yeah, March I get 10th, it. you've got your eight, but there's also a fluidity of maybe eight more guys underneath there, who are going to give Memphis a hell of a, a pitching staff. I think I'm really in, interested to talk to him about that and get some names of guys that I I'm familiar with names, not necessarily mm-hmm. their stuff and where maybe they're viewed. Yeah, where they stand right now. I want to pay you back on him. what you just. Yeah, I want to pay you back on what you just said too. We can talk about this more later, but one of the things that I think they did that was smart was get guys with options. Yeah. So, so because in the past, like last year, especially, they had eight guys, and like not all eight guys were good. Most of the sometimes there was only like two of them that were good at a time, but you couldn't send guys down. That's when you got into yep. the problem with Hicks was really bad to start the year, where it was we have to DFA him or we have to keep him. Like that's your options. So I'm glad that they did that. It was smart. They have five guys that aren't going to be sent down most likely, but the rest of the three up and down whenever you need to do it. Other than Nick. I mean, um, Fernandez, because he can't go down. Yeah, um, I'm really excited last to talk thing. to about that. Yeah, me too. Last thing, that'll be on... Wednesday, Thursday. We'll, we'll release that on Friday. Correct, we'll Friday. On Friday. Yep, it'll be um, out on Friday. Okay, so the last thing that I want to get, since we're, de- we're now done with the position players, um, what do we think of this offense? I, can I... I'm going to... I I'm not trying to be a, like... Escape good. That's not the word I'm looking for. You're not. I'm not trying to bow out of the conversation here, but I'm going to again give you a big question mark with three three dots that I just and a TBD because I don't know. Here's the I have so many questions. What does Goldie look like this year? What does Arenado? I mean, to me, those I'll continue to say it. If those two are, they don't have to be back to 2022 form, but if they are, Arenado does. It oh, if they're between if if they're close. To me, then you have a massive upgrade a- automatically just with those two. What does yeah. Norman? How does Nolan Gorman look? Or like I haven't really gotten to see too many of his really bats because so really no one seems today. to be showing games anymore for spring training. They've been on the last two days. No, yeah, well, I have not today. been home to be fair. Um, um, so good. That's glad. That's good to know. What does? How does Jordan Walker progress? What happens with Mason? Like I am really. What What does Willie do? I just think there are so many questions with this with this offense. That if half of those questions are well, positive, you can't put like Contreras as a question because then every well, player I mean, poses a question. I understand. I'm just saying that what? How does he blend it? Does he start? Does he if he does he get off to another start slow start like he did last year? There's so many Maybe. questions, and also let's be honest, this is the worst 16 game stretch of the year, and it's coming at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, and it's coming when like Lars Newport is probably a top five hitter on the team, and he's not going to be playing. Correct. Um, most likely, we'll see. I don't think. And you don't playing. have your your number one pitcher. Yeah, that's that's obviously tough. I like the offense a lot. Here's my thing. I think Goldie at this point, like when we signed Goldie's extension, right back in what was that 2019, 2018? 19, yeah. 19. Um, 19 or I 20. think we would have if you would have said that he would be this good for the entire thing, oh my gosh. Like I go I couldn't have even imagined it that he would right. be as good as he's been. That's one of the best contracts most of, if not the best contract he's ever handed out. Probably the best. Um so I I think Goldie can be exactly what he was last year again, and it, it's reasonable, right? To be 25% above league average, I take that at the age of 36, 37. Um, Arenado is making $35 million a year, and he has had two mediocre seasons in three years. He needs to be better. I agree. 2021 wasn't medi- maybe mediocre. Offensively, it was. Defensively, it was really good. Last year, he was just mediocre across the board. He was a two-win player. He's, what I got, will... he's got to be back to that. He's the best player on the team or one of them level because that's what he's being paid to do. And quite frankly, he hasn't done enough as a Cardinal. What I will say about the lineup is I'm incredibly excited about it. I because I think that the ceiling, the potential 
ceiling. And I know people say people get fired over that word potential. I understand all that. Please know. I know that. But the potential ceiling of the offense to me is higher than it's been in years. That's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. I agree. And also, I want to clarify something. I meant mediocre to Arenado standards, not mediocre to baseball standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, someone will call you. By the way, love the comments that have been coming on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But someone will call you on that. You know that. Yeah, because he's because like he was seven percent above league average last year, which is not mediocre. But if you're for someone making his contract and expected to do what he does, I would consider that mediocre, if not worse. Um, Correct. Because he's expected to be twenty to thirty percent at least above league average. Because we're talking about Goldie on a decline. 20% above league average again last year. Right. Like, he's right. still an elite hitter in this game. Arnado needs to be back to that. And the way you can pick up Goldie Slack, if if he takes a step back, I don't I don't think – I'm not even sold he's going to, but if he does, that's where Jordan Walker and Nolan Gorman and Lars and Newton Brandon Donovan. In, and they need to get better. Like, yeah, and also just to – like, I am really excited. I know that – I know you're probably not as excited as I am about this. Maybe you are. I don't want to say that. I'm really excited. As you see the Ray Ray jersey back here, one of my all-time favorite Cardinals, as I'm wearing a Willie McGee jersey – my favorite all-time Cardinal, both center fielders. I am really, really excited about the idea of Mason Wynn and Victor Scott at the bottom of this order. Like, I am really, yeah. really excited about it's that. Exciting. Because what that does is that just – it puts so much pressure. If they if they can just be league average offensively, let's just say that at, at the at the minimum, league average. That's, that's a little bit optimistic. Okay, a little bit below league average. Let's Whatever. say anywhere from 85 to 100. Correct. There LPS we go. Plus. Correct. If they're if they're in that area, the pressure that that's going to put on pitchers and defense and catchers, and what mm -hmm. it's going to do to open up holes for Donovan, Goldie, when Newt Bar Gorman. comes back or Gorman, I mean, yeah, it's we haven't had that. It could we be have a really not fun had that. I I can't tell you the last time we've had anything like that. Obviously, the DH is new. I understand all of that. I'm. Just, it's been a long time since we've had some two guys who can put pressure like that at the bottom of the order. To open up the top of the order, Brendan Donovan could be sitting in a potential to have a massive year in 2024. Yeah, he could. And the best thing about this lineup, in my opinion, is um, the versatility they can bring. Like you got guys like Newpar and Donovan who have more power than I think some give them credit for, but they're on base guys. You've got Goldie and Arenado and Contreras who are just mashers, sluggers in the middle of your order. And then you've got guys like Scott and if he's when he's up, Wynn and Edmund, if, we, if it's going to be those guys that are that are just speed threats on the bases. And then you've got some guys in the middle down there with Jordan Walker and Gorman who we don't know what they're going to do, but we know they, they're they probably going to hit at least 20 homers if they're playing every day. They're probably going to be close to an 800 OPS if they're playing every day. So it is exciting, Yeah, and it could have potential to be really fun to watch, but they got to stay healthy. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Anything else before we get out of here? Nope, that's all. That's all I've went got to the today. Went to a tamale festival today. Can I explain the tamale festival? New Orleans has a festival for everything. This festival was one person taking tickets, a DJ, and two booths of food. Mm -hmm. But it was the best, some of the best tamales. And it was not in what I would call an area you really ever want to be in. But the tamales, oh my goodness, were fantastic. Yeah, that so sounds I'm, good. I'm glad we went. I wasn't there. No, there's a festival for everything down here, dude. Next weekend, St. Yeah, Patty's Day. So there we go. I thought it was this weekend. Nope. 17th is St. Patrick's Day. Do you not? We had unofficial St. Patrick's Day already, so I already had my St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah, I know. I heard about it. You didn't do an Irish car bombing. By the way, the worst didn't name for a, I asked. The worst name for a drink of all time. I asked. They said, here's your high noon. I was like, okay, cool. Thanks. You didn't ask for an Irish <laughs> car, car bomb? I asked, and they said, we have high noons and beer. I was like, okay, I'll take one. That's fine. <laughs> oh, university. All right, well, let's get out of here. Uh, like I said, looking forward to having Kareem with us next time. Tell a friend, hit that subscribe button, and we'll talk to you soon. Go Cards.